Hello traders, this is John Kicklider, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com. For today's strategy video, we're going to do something of a PSA. Now, you've probably heard this before if you've watched my videos long enough. Uh, I do this from time to time, but it definitely deserves a reminder because we are heading into uh, what could be some turbulent trading. And the importance of today's strategy video is this trading uh, or this market activity is actually when we can't place liquid trades. And it's being mindful of your exposure through illiquid or uh, offline markets. So the weekends are the most consistent and steady of these periods. And of course, we can go to low liquidity, as in holiday trading, which has uh, certainly been uh, something that we experienced uh, recently. But I'm more concerned not just the low liquidity, but the absolute dearth or lack of liquidity uh, that we get during weekends. And this is especially important uh, to recognize regardless of uh, what the circumstances might be. Uh, if you hold short to medium term trades, you should really consider the gap in trading over the weekend uh, cutoff as a part of your strategy. Whether it can be a detriment or a benefit, it depends on what your strategy is. But nevertheless, it's something that has to go into uh, the consideration. Now, if you're a short-term trader, I generally recommend you don't hold uh, trades through the weekend. Short-term, in my view, is typically anything that's intended to last for less than two trading days. If you're expecting to trade something over the period or span of two trading days, and you're heading into a liquidity uh, drain, then through that period, anything can change. If I were looking at a, let's say, 15 minute chart of the dollar index, which we have here, and I, let's say I'm heading into the uh, weekend period, and we're just there, all right, hypothetical. And let's say that I was trying to play a retreat off of the 99.85, 99.90 level as a range trade. Now, clearly, that is quite risky. To break 99.90, would not be particularly difficult if you had something that uh, were to occur over the weekend that was specifically robust for the US dollar. Not difficult whatsoever. And in fact, this upcoming weekend can supply such a, a catalyst. Uh, but you can imagine that placing a range bound trade with a gap in liquidity where so many different fundamental things, both known and unknown, can cross the wires, it's a low probability, high risk scenario. Not worth it. Not worth it. Now, if you're trading on a daily chart for a medium term or longer, medium term for me is two days to two weeks, uh, preferably your trade would last uh, closer to the upper end of that range or higher. Uh, if that is your time frame, then holding through the weekend is just uh, a part uh, of this, uh, the effort. Uh, it's inevitable that you're going to have to hold through a weekend unless you have really robust trades uh, or trades that happen in the very twilight hours of the week. But many times you place trades in the middle of a trading week and they easily go over the weekend and into the subsequent week, especially if you have a limit on liquidity or, sorry, not liquidity, volatility and volume uh, that you expect to pick up as, let's say, event risk starts to chug. That's expected. All right, that can be accommodated. But when you're talking short term, that's something you want to avoid. Now, this is taking into consideration nothing of event risk. This is only uh, with the consideration of time frame of the trade and just the off chance of, of volatility or even a direction change because of something fundamental that develops over the weekend. It can be as targeted as, let's say, a piece of event risk for the particular currency. Since we're talking about the dollar, perhaps it's U.S. event risk that uh, we had on the docket or we had anticipated. Happens a lot. Or we can have a development that speaks to systemic risk trends. That does happen and not as infrequently as many people would uh, probably believe in these low volatility kind of conditions. Now, let's, the reason for my PSA, uh, the real reason, uh, this is something that I've talked about in a number of places and a number of times in the past, so uh, I wouldn't have uh, revived it if there weren't something very pressing that should put us on guard. And that is... Scheduled event risk, targeted event risk, and it's more targeted towards the euro. That event is going to be this weekend's 
French election, the first round. And there will be a runoff uh, a little later if uh, conditions don't pan out. This is a high-profile piece of event risk, and it happens on Sunday. Obviously, liquidity is drained, and the impact potential is quite large here. It's not an exaggeration to say if uh, the candidates who have trumpeted the threat of bringing a euro referendum, particularly Le Pen, if these candidates were to gain a clear lead or majority, then there is a significant risk that's going to impact the market. And not just isolated to the euro, but the euro's impact will be felt most acutely. Remember what happened with the U.S. presidential election with Donald Trump, the uh, candidate of change and America first mentality, meaning anti-trade. Uh, or uh, when we had the Brexit vote, the assumptions were that it was going to be remain, it was leave. All right, the impact from the sterling, the impact for U.S. markets and the dollar were quite significant. This, too, would be quite significant. And if it were to come out, let's say, poorly for global trade conditions, which would insinuate uh, that uh, the agents of change, uh, Le Pen, uh, chief amongst them, were to uh, garner the greatest uh, vote, then it can charge significant impact on the euro. Most acutely for the euro, the shared currency, because obviously when we're talking about uh, a possible referendum of pulling France out of the eurozone, not the European Union only, the eurozone, that actually impacts the currency. That's one of the core countries of the shared euro. This is not like the dis debate of Greece, which even if Greece were to leave, it would be a significant detriment. This is talking about a core country for the euro area. This would be a enormous impact. The euro would be just pummeled. Now, it's unlikely to be black and white in those terms, but it still has a wide variety of grays, and these grays can generate significant impact itself. Now, this is not only a consideration for your euro. This is definitely a consideration for the dollar. And for that matter, it's also a consideration for the Japanese yen and the British pound. Why? Well, as we refer to quite often, uh, the euro is the world's second largest and most liquid reserve currency. If there is a prominent risk that one of the largest countries in the euro area is going to potentially put up to vote uh, a withdrawal, kind of like the Brexit, then it's going to drive down the appeal of the euro. Capital is going to flee because the uncertainty of uh, all the uh, financial instruments that are priced in this particular currency, and it's going to be uh, fleeing to other countries and other currencies. Many countries uh, will absorb the capital, including the UK and Japan, Canada and Australia, but it's really going to be the US that uh, observes the greatest impact. It will uh, uh, absorb most of that capital, and it would be a tremendous rally for the dollar. Now, if you're trying to play a short dollar position, that's extremely risky. All right, or you're looking at one of the dollar crosses. Let's say that you are short dollar yen or uh, your long Aussie USD or long Kiwi USD. Obviously, something like that would have a tremendous impact. So it's not just isolated to the Euro USD. What's more, the reality that another country is potentially moving towards protectionism and trade ties are breaking down, as has been the primary concern of the IMF and World Bank uh, in recent uh, months, uh, that would speak towards risk trends. And there's a very real risk that we end up having something like the S&P 500 uh, lead a more broad-based drop in sentiment. If we hit that kind of tempo, obviously all bets are off. That's extreme market movement. Now, it's difficult to get to that scale, but it's not far-fetched. Now, this is all from targeted event risk. We also have to be mindful of the un uh, unknown the uncertain. Clearly, after this past week, uh, weekend, uh, with the threats of North Korea uh, uh, 
talking about nuclear war, it's a more tense situation globally. All right? This is just one of a number of uncertainties that face the market. Obviously, a thermonuclear detonation is going to be uh, influential enough. Now, it's hard to anticipate such events. We wouldn't be able to, uh, for most uh, accounts. In that term, we can't just sit on the sidelines always and just uh, be uh, frightened by the uncertainty of weekends. Uh, the same would be true at that point if we were talking about the uncertainties of overnight trade when we're not actually watching the markets. Uh, we can't be too frightened away by those circumstances. But in general markets where we know that these risks are growing, we do need to be more mindful, and most importantly, when there is a backdrop for the markets that are extraordinarily skewed, which is the case with risk trends. When we look at what we pay to get into the markets for risk trends and what we actually expect to, you know, to earn as in return for the risk that we are taking, when it's this uh, askew, the threat is extraordinary. All right, you're you're asking for a lot of trouble to be blindly complacent in a long risk position when the threats continue to build, and you're holding over the weekend, especially on a leveraged position or something that uh, is higher up on the risk spectrum. So something like an emerging market or a high yield uh, exposure. If you're doing something along those lines, you are pushing the risk boundaries to the extreme. And those are the types of assets that are going to be far more responsive to those uh, unexpected developments. So this is just a general reminder. We're coming up on the weekend. By the time I do my strategy video tomorrow, it's already going to be the, uh, a closed session. The liquidity will have already drained. So I think it's best to do this today. Be mindful. Run through your trades and really consider, is this worth holding through the weekend given the known and potential risks uh, that can happen during that liquidity drain? Am I comfortable enough, confident enough uh, to actually just hold it through? Or maybe I should get out and get back in on Monday or early Tokyo session trading wherever you are in the world. You'll pay spreads and maybe a couple pips if nothing happens. But that is a very, very cheap means of uh, gaining a greater peace of mind in that trade. All right. We'll wrap it up here. We'll do our next strategy and final strategy video of the week tomorrow. Until then, I wish you good luck trading out there.